What's going on guys, this is Chris with the first video of 2023, so Happy New Year to everybody watching. I've seen a lot of videos on YouTube already about musical New Year's resolutions, so it kind of got me thinking about what I wanted to do, um, and that was a bad idea. In the past I've been pretty terrible with resolutions, what I tend to do is I go into January 1st with very high expectations, you know, I'm super motivated, I'm ready to go, and then by day two or three I've already had enough. Um, so you know, like for example I'll say I need to practice at least one hour every day, and I need to practice seven days a week, no breaks, no matter what. Um, and for me that's not sustainable. I don't play music as a job, you know, it's very much sort of more on the hobby side of things and I have a full-time job outside of that, so, you know, stuff like that is very, very difficult to maintain. So, this year I thought I would have a bit of a different approach. This year all I want to do is play saxophone all year and continue to have fun with it. No stress, no working myself up about how much I'm practicing. As long as I'm having fun and I'm progressing and I'm enjoying myself, that's all that matters and that is pretty much my goal this year. So with that in mind, I thought it would be quite nice and interesting to figure out exactly where I am at the start of 2023. And then maybe this time next year, we can look back and see how far we've come. My three main instruments at the moment are soprano saxophone, alto saxophone, and also clarinet. Now I've been playing clarinet for a lot longer than the saxophone. I picked it up when I was about 15, 16 years old. Um, I've not played it for a while, but I've recently got back into it. Uh, so I also want to factor that in, you know, and you know, some days I don't want to play my saxophone, but I'll happily get the clarinet out. So I think what I'm going to be doing is recording myself playing a, a relatively simple, but not overly easy piece on all three of those instruments. We're going to break it down, see what it looks like, see what it sounds like. And then we'll sort of look at where we can go from there and you know, what essentially we want to achieve this year. So the piece in question is the Concerto de Aranjuez. Orange Juice. Concerto de Aranjuez. Orange Juice. <sighs> Orange Juice. I don't know what it's called precisely. It is Concerto de Aranjuez. Don't know who wrote it. Don't know what language it is. I just know that I have the music and a backing track for it. So let's give that a go. So I will put details of all the instruments and gear in the description, but for the soprano saxophone, I'm using a Selma Concept mouthpiece with a three strength Van Doren reed. For the alto saxophone, I'm using a Theo One Water mouthpiece with a Van Doren 2.5 reed. And for the clarinet, I'm using a Pomerico Artista Soul mouthpiece with a Ven 2.0 synthetic clarinet reed. So those are just things to bear in mind for those that are a bit more technical savvy. They're all quite small tip openings. Um, they're quite, I wouldn't say they're hard reads, but they're sort of medium strength reads. Uh, so that somehow factors in, I think, and it might be more important next year, uh, depending on where we're at with our playing. So I'm gonna play the recording now, and then I'm gonna play a clip of myself reacting to the recording, which I did right after I put everything together. And then we'll come back at the end for sort of a wrap up and where we're going from here.
right, so I've put the clips together um, and we're going to now look back and sort of react to what we have here. All right, so starting on the soprano. I mean, I think I think I sound pretty good on soprano. The microphone is peaking a bit, which is annoying, but in terms of tone and intonation, sounds all right. Maybe a little bit flat, but all things considered, not too bad. Now, I know that alto is coming up and I had a lot of trouble with alto on the day. Um, so let's see what this sounds like. Oh God, okay, that's really flat. Um, okay, I seem to have got it back a bit. <laughs> but overall, the alto just sounds, it just sounds really clunky and like I'm, like I'm a beginner essentially. It sounds like I'm just figuring out where my fingers go. Um, and then the clarinet, as is to be expected, I think it, it sounds pretty good. Um, yeah, my tone on clarinet is, is good. I guess putting my fingers down evenly is maybe a tiny bit of an issue there. And going over the break as well. That was quite smooth there, but the, the, the time before that, it, there was a little bit of a gap there. Um, but yeah, that clarinet sounds pretty good, I think. And then soprano again. Yeah, I mean, a soprano, I'm, I'm pleased with it. I think I definitely sound better in the higher range of the soprano. Yeah, wow. I'm actually quite impressed by the vibrato there. But yeah, the further down the soprano I go, the, the worse I think it sounds. So I've done quite well here, I think. Oh God, yeah, I'm... Alto really doesn't sound good to me. Yeah, having a really hard time on those low notes as well. I think it was a sign of the day itself. Um, but another thing with alto I found is sustaining notes. They, they cut off really quickly. Um, so yeah, that was, that was good. So overall, everything except alto I think was quite good. So yeah, as past me suggested, I thought everything sounded quite good except for the alto and I did have a lot of difficulty with alto on the day. I think there's something wrong with my horn. Uh, I've had a lot of trouble with it since I bought it because I bought it second hand. It had a few leaks and then I took it to get repaired and the leaks weren't fixed and then I took it to be repaired again and then it was okay and then suddenly it's not really working again. Um, I mean the first time I tried to record that clip that you've just seen, this is what it sounded like. So there's definitely something a little bit off. It could well be me, a part of it's me, but there's definitely something with the horn that's not quite right. But on the subject of alto, a few things that I noticed that were pretty bad were the intonation was very, very off. It was incredibly flat. It sounded like air being slowly let out of a balloon. It was just like, Ugh. it was, I didn't really like the way it sounded at all. And when it was played alongside soprano and clarinet, it was really more noticeable just how out of tune I was playing. If I isolate bits of the track, so it's just the alto playing, you, you can also hear just how sort of off it is. Exactly. It also didn't make it into the final cut, but on the lower notes, I was finding that I was squeaking a lot. So that's where I guess I'm too firm in my embouchure, believe it or not. And the note jumps, um, it jumps up the octave and that's... And finally, the other thing that I noticed was sustaining notes. On soprano and clarinet, it was much easier for me to, to hold a long note, particularly at the end. If you watch the very end, my alto sort of cuts off, but I'm still playing soprano and clarinet. And I don't know if that's my embouchure, if it's my breath control, or if it's just the horn, but, you know, as soon as I let up and try and blow a bit softer, the, the sort of note just cuts off. So that's another thing I guess I need to work on is just sustaining long notes and getting more comfortable with that. So let's move on to the clarinet. Um, I've been playing clarinet a little bit more recently, not so much on its own, but I'll be playing soprano and then I'll get the clarinet out or I'll be playing alto and then I'll get the clarinet out. Um, I, I'm much more experienced with clarinet because I've been playing it for longer. I think I'm better at it than I am at the 
soprano and alto. Um, I think it sounded very, very nice in the recording. I don't really have too many gripes with it, other than going over the break was a bit of a problem. It got a little bit sort of, I don't know, shaky between the B flat and the C, which is to be expected. You know, I've not really played clarinet much in the past five years or so, so I'm still getting used to it. But also my fingers. I think if anything, my fingers are the biggest problem when it comes to clarinet because my breath control's there, my umbush is there, but then I'm let down when I put my fingers down and it's like a, you know, if I'm going from a G to a D, uh, but it's going uh, 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 rather than all the way down so just making sure I have you know a lot more consistency and that my fingers are working together rather than individually um, and that that also applies to soprano as well I'm not as interested in developing my clarinet sound as much as I said I'm just sort of picking it up because I enjoy it and I guess I'm quite good at it um, so in terms of goals if I just carry on playing and maintain the level that I'm at I'm, I'm pretty happy with that but finally, onto the soprano, the sort of crown jewels of my playing. Um, that's a that's a really weird thing to say. I absolutely love playing soprano. It's my favorite instrument that I've ever played. It's an incredibly nice shape. It has a really, really lovely sound, and it's just so much fun to play. For the first month or so of playing soprano, it was pretty difficult. My intonation was terrible. I didn't really know what I was doing with my embouchure. And I guess I was playing the soprano like an alto. And over time I've started to develop a bit more of a soprano tone and a soprano feel and embouchure. And you know, I, I've sort of figured out what I'm supposed to be doing. And I think I just sound pretty good on soprano now. Now it's obviously not perfect. I was playing a little bit flat. My intonation was not great. My fingers, just like on clarinet, weren't super reliable. But I think the sound of the soprano was just really nice in this piece. Uh, and moving forward, I guess, there are a few things that I want to look at. I think my upper range is very nice. And, you know, there was that one vibrato bit that really impressed me in my reaction. I think that, that very note there, I think that is what I'm striving for across the whole range of the soprano. I think the G up to the C above the break is like the, the golden area of my playing at the moment. I think it just sounds so pure and very, very nice and it's almost oboe-like. If I can sustain the note and not let it quiver either sharp or flat, I think it just sounds so beautiful. So I would really like to sort of have that sound across the whole range of the soprano. I think the further down I go on the soprano, the, the sort of weaker it starts to sound, it starts to sound a bit more tinny, maybe a little bit flatter as well. It doesn't have that body that it does at the top, so I really want to develop that sound lower down on the instrument. Otherwise, I think what's going to let me down as I progress is my technique. I can play every note, I can sight read pretty well, and I can get a sound out of the instrument. But what my dad's always said is, anyone can play saxophone, but it's very difficult to play saxophone well. So I'm at the point where I can play saxophone, I can play soprano, but am I playing it well? You know, I think it sounds pretty good in the recording I've just done, but I'm also well aware of how much better it could sound. So I think it's, it's going to be important for me to refine my technique and to really work on getting, you know, just a nicer sound and a bit more control and a bit more body in my playing. So that's sort of my goal going forward for soprano. But I guess that's it, really. I mean, this is kind of one half of a story that's going to be ongoing until January next year. So I guess, you know, there's no point going on and on and on. But those are sort of my goals loosely fitting into the continue having fun and continue to progress resolution that I have. And, you know, I really hope I can keep going with it. I'm having a lot of fun with Saxon Sun. I'm really enjoying my saxophone journey so far and it's great that there are so many people who want to watch it and want to follow along and you know I know we're not a, a massive massive channel and you know maybe we will be this year maybe we won't but the fact that we have people watching and enjoying the videos and getting something out of my journey and my dad's journey and you know all of us just playing saxophone together it's it's great it's an awesome community and um, I'm really looking forward to it so you know, let me know what your resolutions are, if you have any, particularly related to saxophone, but share whatever, <laughs> I don't mind. And um, yeah, I hope you have a really awesome year. I hope you hit all of your goals, hit all your resolutions, and I hope I do as well. So have a good one.
I'll see you guys in the next video very soon. All right, bye.